I'm Charlie Teal, your host from the Call to Create podcast. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be sharing uncut live streamed interviews that we conducted back in October at the Ben Film Fest. We sat down with filmmakers, directors, producers, actors, and we had fascinating conversations. Next up, we have a great Q&A with actors Falk Henschel and Kimberly Lehmans. So, like, Falk, you were saying you've been a professional actor for 12 years, is that right? Yeah, I, I guess, like, when does it start is always the question. I mean, I've been doing it since I was, when like, you get little. Paid. When you get paid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've gotten paid right. since 2000. Right. Right. Yeah, like, like 12, 13 years. Ago. Okay, okay. And then, Kimberly, what's your, how long have you been? Um, I guess my first professional gig would have been in 2008. Okay. And then... Yeah, made money intermittently in between. Right. But I would say that my career started when in 2008. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And so, why? I guess you know, sort of. The why do you do like, this? Why? Why do you do this? Why, why do you, you put yourself so crazy? I mean, in what we've talked about, just you know, in conversation, it sounds like this is a wild ride. It is always up and down. You have no idea when the next gig comes or how you're going to get it if you're gonna get it. So why, why, <laughs> why? why this? I think our answers might be a little different. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's ladies first. Oh, okay. <laughs> for me, it's ladies first. Um, for me, I didn't think or know that I could do anything else. I started at 18, straight out the gate, and it just kind of worked for me, and then I worked very hard to keep that going. Now I'm 32, and I want a bit more stability in my life, so I've gone back to school um, so that I don't have to have these big, long dry periods in between. As for Falk, I know that this is like all he ever wants to do, all he will ever do. He is a storyteller by heart. I like to get paid to play. <laughs> Um, so we, we have different Motivation, kind of yeah. motivations when it comes to that. Yeah, I've always wanted to do it since I was really, really little, and I really? did it like even I think it was ten when I like took my my parents like VHS camera or whatever it was back then and ran into the woods and made films. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those. It's like this the big. bigger ones, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and made films and then the longer I pursued it also it's just by nature like I don't know anything else like the longer you go the more you're like ah, I have a huge gap in my resume from born till now right um, and so then it, it just becomes what you do and it's just I can't I have no idea what else I would do right yeah. so yeah at this point you're stuck <laughs> at this point I'm in it to win it or to Right. Crash and burn. One right, of the two. right. One of the two. But the it sounds just like changed. it sounds like things are kind of shifting for you. Yeah, yeah, I've, you know, this is all I thought that I knew how to do, and I kind of had a bit of like a midlife crisis of being like I'm not getting as much out of it as I am putting into it anymore. So I just wanted to do a shift in my life to be like I need to I don't know if this degree thing that everybody's talking about college seems to be the safe bet of just being like you know put in your time get your piece of paper and then there's a value attached to you which I've been chasing for a very very long time in this industry your resume doesn't really ever equate to what you have to offer right. mm. and I it just burned me out and so I just had to find a different way to be able to feel valued, valued yeah <laughs> it's, you yeah, know, yeah. a very basic artist thing to be able to just be like, I have so much to give and nobody seems to, like, want it or respect it. And so mm. I'll try this other thing that it seems like most of the populace does and is happy with. Right. Yeah. And, and to still be pursuing my career as it comes to me as opposed to just putting my entire lifeblood into something right. that I'm not getting yeah. anything out of anymore. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, and I just throw tantrums when I'm not being valued. <laughs> Why does nobody want me right now? <laughs> Stomp yeah. your feet. Yeah. Thrash around on the floor. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'll be like, yeah, that's what. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it's are the you, official Yes, we right? started. Yeah, you guys are live too. We're live. No, yeah. we're, we're live. <laughs> we were just as surprised. We are live streaming out to the world as we speak. So. Damn. Technology. <laughs> And let me extend to the audience, if you guys have a 
questions you would like to ask, feel free to put it out there. So, so. Uh -oh. what was the question? <laughs> Who's your favorite? This is Natalie goat? Manns. She she is in a play that I'm doing uh, uh, here locally right now. She's one of our leads, and we have a beautiful little inside Plug joke. The play. Oh, it's called These Shining Lives. Please come. These Shining Lives. Tickets are still I think that's your camera right there. This camera is this yeah, my camera. Is this my camera. Uh, it's sold out. It's sold out. All right. <laughs> um, but yes. So she was asked. We we do this thing where we go. Ah! They won't hear you say it. I'm the only one mic'd, but we we have like this precious goat call that we do. And so she asked, nice. "Who is my favorite goat?" It would be Mumu Lem Lemans, circa 2004. <laughs> this is not what okay. you wanted on your podcast. Right. That's the beauty of this. Yeah, no. It, but it seems like you will. I mean, this being a classic example of this will always be something that you do somehow. Yes. So everything that I just said before, thankfully, I've been able to find in this community. I've been able, I've acted more in my life in the last three years that I've moved to Bend, Oregon than I did in the seven years that I did in LA. It's a lot of like hustle and struggle to get the job. Will you get the job? Where's the next job? And here you can just go to your local community theater and act for two months straight. Right. <laughs> and, and it's beautiful. And so right. I've actually never worked more in my life than since wow. I left LA. <laughs> really but the pay is the same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and even though, and not just saying this because fellow actors are sitting here, but the talent level in the, in this town. It's amazing. Bend is, yeah. I just, I, I'm blown away by the people and not Josh so much. Oh, that's Natalie Mann's <laughs> man. That's all right. That's all right. But no, see, I mean, I, I've just, I was blown away when I first got here myself. Like, wow, like, hi, there are a lot of just talented people in this town. It's exciting. We've met some of our closest friends here through the theater, through the film group that we started when we first moved here. Yeah. And we did not think that we would meet anyone that had the similar interests that we did right. and we have and they've stepped up to the plate and there's incredible talent here and we're just so excited to be able to <laughs> play. <laughs> yeah. That's me. <laughs> no, same here. You're excited. I like to play, play. yeah. <laughs> Falk, you said you are not a stage actor. No, I've never done it. I've yet. been, I've been, not yet. Yet. Um, <laughs> Getting sucked in by the minute as we speak. <laughs> I would love to because I think that, you know, I see her like, you know, go out and perform every you know four days a week and uh, I'm so jealous you know if I if there was something that I could do like that but I I just have zero experience and I think it's a different medium and I right. uh, I'm terrified to to make that transition you know the performing I've done it as a dancer I've done a little bit musical and then backup dancing so I, I I know the experience of the being on stage and having an audience and funny enough that part of it I never liked Hmm. A live audience and the applause and the like, uh, maybe introvert like a like panic or something. Uh -huh. uh, I, I like the you know, creating this weird product that you need all these you know two hundred fifty people there and cutting it together and right. like, yeah, it's, it's it, it feels more intimate, um, just to me. Oh, interesting. But this play actually is the one where I saw it and I was like, oh. I really like theater now. <laughs> I really love this play. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I have to say, I, it, it touched me deeply. Yeah. I mean, this play. The story's incredible. It truly did. Performances and everything about it is yeah. just, this is yeah. going to be the third time I'm going to see it tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. I love and it. You're like, not, <laughs> huh? you're like, and I'm not just going because Kim. <laughs> No, not at all. Not like, at all. You don't have to go I'm again. very vocal about like not wanting to go see something. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <true>. <laughs> like, why not? But I, I did. Yeah, I did. And I think that's why. I think that's what so far maybe just what I saw, but I, I had never really connected as much as I did with this play. Um, yeah, and this one is just yeah. all emotions, laughter. Yeah. You know, it like yeah. starts with so much laughter and connection. And then really punches you in the emotional gut towards the end, and it's and it's really important to hear the story. And it's just top to bottom beautiful. Yeah, I love that smile. She's just like, yep. Well, yep. my other castmates yep. are here too. So hello, ladies. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have to get um, special permission from your union to be able to do this play here? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. But we're no, live no, on air. No, it's the, the Screen word? Actors Guild. Yeah. Get off my bleep. <laughs> yeah, no, there, no, that's going to be equity. That's a different different guild for stage actors. So, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, so they let us play on stage. Cool. But if it's a film thing, then they're a bit strict on it. Yeah. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't know there was a distinction there to be made between the... Yeah, once you join the union, it's... Uh, it can be a pain to to do like, for example, a short film or something like that. I, I think the union needs to Just make that re- much redo easier. Just redo some things. Yeah, I right. agree. Because it's yeah. Because as artists, we want to create with our friends, yeah. and we don't want to have to go through all of these paperwork. So if, like nobody's getting paid. <laughs> nobody's getting paid. We just want to pick right. up a camera and shoot with our friends and. There's a lot of like paperwork that you have to fill out most of the time to make sure that, oh, if it gets distributed and, oh, if you were to get advertising off of YouTube or whatever, then everybody right. has to get paid out accordingly. But, yeah, so I wish that they would just have a lenient yeah. kind of situation for people that just want to play with their friends. Again, right. play. <laughs> yeah. You just want to play. I just want to play. He wants play. to tell the stories. <laughs> no, I love playing. I love playing. But, yeah. No. So, I know I know that there are big things in the works for you. Next possible big project. Don't say it. Don't say it. No, I'm not no. saying anything. <laughs> I wasn't say anything. But yeah, yeah. Um, without yeah, without <laughs> referencing anything more than that. <laughs> Silence. Yeah, just, what is he talking about? <laughs> no, it's a it's a childhood. I won't say what it is, but but uh, it's a childhood. It's the. The project that, as a kid, influenced me to be like, that's what I want to do. Right. And that's really nice, just in general, in your career. Um, you quickly realize that there, it's not what you always thought it was going to be. And a lot of it is like, uh, you know, a lot of compromising or, or doing something for the career and, you know, for your career to get elevated and to have a better mm-hmm. shot at getting the next. It's always doing something so that you can get the next job. Um, and rarely do you get an opportunity to say, I want to do this. Like, what, I, what I'm assuming you feel with plays, mm. you know? You just read something, you sort of go, I just want to tell this story. Mm. Right. You know? Um, that luxury is usually reserved for the A-listers, um, and maybe B. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that, you know, they get the scripts on their desk and go, which one would you like? Right. You know? Right. I, I don't, I haven't experienced that yet. That's, I've gotten a couple of offers in my life, uh, and I'm very, very blessed. Knock on something. Yeah. Um, and that's that's really fun because then you really can only focus on story, character. What does this mean to me? What can I do? Rather than, you know, the the business part of it. Right. You know. Right. Right. And and the like calculation of exactly. will this benefit me exactly. in my career? Yeah. Does it? What is the term? Of it? Does it move the needle? Right. Mm. Yeah. That's something that a lot of people are concerned about when building a career. And also just to, to pick, you know, you, I said this in the workshop, you know, you do co-stars and then guest stars. You just do whatever you can get. Right. You know, if you get a job that's paid in Hollywood in a legit project early on in your career, you just go, yeah, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, right. you want me to do right. what? I just sit there and look, look, weird. I'll just do this. I'll do that. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So I was going to ask that particular uh, franchise that particular film was that the thing as a kid or I guess it would actually have to go back even further um, was that the the thing that inspired you as a kid like I remember when I was a kid I know exactly. for me it was Star Wars Star Wars? Like, I remember being a kid when Star Wars came out and I think I, I saw it like 14 times in Hocus the theater Pocus. So I was just like, which one? the very first Star the very Wars. first one a yes. special movie Hocus Pocus yeah that's yours mm. Um, yeah, do, do you have that? Hocus Pocus. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I think there's a Hocus Pocus party at our place. <laughs> yes, that is. <laughs> um, we, need to have a, we need to have a screening party here. Oh! That'd be so fun. <laughs> there we go. We'll Done. talk after the yeah. show. <laughs> that excitement. But yes, no, for me, I know this is about you, but Hocus Pocus <laughs> and any witchy thing, the charmed, I was, I, the one thing that I like was like agents 
moved, oh, yeah, true. was charmed. And I wanted, they were remaking the 90s show, and I was like, this is it. Oh my God, this is my moment. And I did everything I could to be on the show. And then they went, which is what Hollywood's doing right now, is they went diverse. They did a full Latin um, cast, which right. is fine, which is great. So it was just, it was, it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, any, any 90s witch remake, Right. <laughs> so true. I'm in Bend, Oregon, and I'll be free after Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so wait, hang on before you answer. Have you are do you watch the um, is it Sabrina the Teenage Witch the Yeah, this is the Netflix? Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Yes. Um, we talked about this. <laughs> is, this I, is this a sore topic? Should I not have brought that up? Is no, it, it's just I'm a bit like I'm so passionate about like the the witch genre and uh, they just you know it's they went really young it's like very very young and beautiful and it's just hollywood I, 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 it's, I um it's just not what i was super excited i was super bummed i was super bummed i okay. really was looking forward to towards the you show had a, you had a vision in your mind of what it could i was be. like this is it and the trailer looked really cool yeah, yeah, yeah. um but i just feel like sabrina was a bit monotone a bit flat oh. and the way that they like portray the ants and stuff it's just it wasn't what i was excited about so they can try again <laughs> the reboot with you just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they haven't done it right yet and and i hope that i won't be like a, a wrinkly old witch by the time they figure it out <laughs> which is a witch oh which is a witch the one with the right. with the ward ah! you know. I can do it too, so. Yeah, but go ahead, back to your so, games. So what was your... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a few. I, I remember uh, Willow was among it. Um, yes. Braveheart was very big for me. Uh, Forrest Gump. Um, Legends of the Fall. Legends of the Fall. That's why I'm riding horses right now as well. And I have long hair. I just want to be... <laughs> want to be in Legends of the Fall? Um, no, I like those. What I what I love were those epic stories, but still with a huge human element. Mm -hmm. And I, I, this is why I'm so excited about this. Um, but in general, I feel like that's gotten lost a little bit as soon as I started working. I feel like they were like, no more originals, like a Forrest Gump, is, you just can't get it made anymore. You know, that film that is a drama, but that is epic. You know, mm -hmm. it costs 60 million, or even Braveheart. You know, Braveheart was back then 65 million. And it was epic, um, but it was about somebody that lived, it was a human story, it was about loss, it was all these things. And I feel like now, at the, or in the past five to 10 years, it's, it's mainly when it's epic, it's superheroes, or some other French Star Wars, right? You know, Star okay. Wars is coming back. But yeah, so for me, it was those movies. It was movies that had a, a Legends of the Fall. It was a drama, just a family drama. But they go to war. They're on horses. It's right. huge scope. Um, so that's sort of what what I always thought was amazing. Human emotion on an epic scale. Right. <laughs> Fantasy <Well>. magic. <clears throat> Fantasy magic. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Fantasy. <laughs> so what we need then, what you for the, so the project you two need is a like like a witch with a fall with the set with Scottish, witches or yes, something. Totally. Oh, what? What did you say? I mean, it could be this thing that he wants to do. That would be a good. I feel mix, like we've blown this thing way out of proportion. <laughs> <laughs> we have now completely jinxed you. <laughs> no! no, sorry. It's okay. There'll be other things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the other thing too. You just never know. You know, you just never know how things will go and what right. you'll do and. And how it'll end up. There's, I always hope to think that there's a lot of control, that you can control it. But I think that's just a smidgen. You like set the steering wheel and you set the gears, and but then you got to see what the traffic is doing. I guess. <laughs> I was wondering how that metaphor. Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of. You know. Like it but I feel hurt. like there's just in the end, it's there's so much magic. I feel like any right. movie um, that gets made to me that's magical that that worked. Right. You know, because there's always a story of like this person meeting this person, and then it came together because that person actually knew this person. They saw that Facebook live stream, and then they, they saw found that their Facebook live stream. Exactly. And... That was exactly how it happened. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of ma magic dust involved. I think yeah. in all aspects of creativity. Well, I know we were just getting started, but I keep now I'm getting like the 
the Wrap ten it up. second countdown sort of. What does that look like when you? Oh, get it's right that? there. Look at all the numbers. <coughs> oh, oh look at all the fours. All the, that's a lot of fours. That's, that's a, a good fours. omen. It's yes. my lucky number. Okay. And we're easily distracted. <laughs> and Cow. here goes. That's a lot of fours right now. Ah, there you go. Felt good. Sorry. All right. Now, now that we've ended on that stellar note. <laughs> <laughs> on fours. fours. But um, so uh, thanks again to you guys. And thanks, thanks, for thanks to our Yay. audience. Our live here. audience. And thank you for tuning in to our second live stream episode of The Call to Creature. And... If you're in Bend, Oregon, come check out Open Space Event Studios. You can find it at openspace.studios. I think that's right. <laughs> Openspace.studio, maybe without the S. And um, thanks again. So, you guys were awesome. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. The Call to Create with host Charlie Till is presented by Ghost Village Films and captured at Open Space Event Studio in Bend, Oregon. Subscribe and follow on YouTube, iTunes, and thecalltocreate.com.